All right. Okay, Jake, before we start, I, I got to oh, yes. know, what do you think right, about Sam not streaming? I don't know, man. I feel like there's a void inside my chest. He's letting where... the people oh. down. I was just telling oh, them no. when I when I was streaming Saturday, when me and Jackson were talking, one of Sam's viewers who's in there a lot, his name is Dark Matters, he came into my chat and he was like, do you, he was like, why is Sam not streaming? <laughs> He, he was like, when is Sam streaming again? Did he stop? Hey, hey, hello, how are you doing? It's me, Corey, Purple Thunder. I don't know why I introduced myself as Corey. I don't ever do that. Um, we're Corey. here, the PNTV <laughs> podcast. We have a long, prestigious list of guests today. So first up, we have the returning Jake Neal. How's it going there, sir? Uh, it's going good. You can also call me Sam One. Sam One is here. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, not for the fact that they are related, but just because he's just so yeah, similar see, to Sam. You have to put us all together, like <laughs> it's parts of a whole, and eventually we can make up to be one Sam. Mm -hmm. They're like um, like Megazords, like they all got to come together yeah, to become oh, Ultra yeah. Neo. I am the legs. <laughs> <laughs> so next we have Isaiah, who this is what, your third time back on the podcast? How are you doing, sir? Well, time. Uh... <laughs> I'm kind of in a rough spot right now. Okay. <laughs> so, so I've been reading some comic books. Mm -hmm. And it's been a while. It's been a long time since I've started following series. It's been a long time. A long time. And I jumped into Spider-Man again. Mm -hmm. I found out that he has a sister. Oh. I was kind of pissed. Oh, so God? I started reading more. Penny Parker? <laughs> and then... Huh? Is, it, is her name Penny Parker? No, it's fu fucking... She's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Teresa. Teresa. Teresa Parker? She's a, yes. Teresa. She's a super spy. Okay. And it's actually kind of like, it's kind of it's kind of weird because she just shows up and she's like, Peter, you're like, I'm supposed to. She's like, oh, I guess you do. Okay. Then, well. Yeah. Teresa so ruined Isaiah's whole man. week. <laughs> exactly. I can't. <laughs> Straight. Oh. Uh. It's well, you know what would brighten your week and everybody's week who is watching what this? Way? We actually have the illustrious Sam lookalike, the Sam fill-in himself. Brock, how <gasps> are you doing, sir? The discount Sam Neal is right discount here. Discount Sam Neal himself. Uh, Brock is on. He is officially joining the PNTV content creation squad. Brock, you know, long-standing yeah! member of PNTV. Not saying, you know, he's like new school blood or anything like that. But on the content creation side, he is joining us. He is joining the ranks of uh, us uh, chuckle fucks who are putting out content on the internet. So congratulations to Brock. Uh, round of yeah. applause for Brock. A round thank of applause you, for Brock. No, but nobody actually clapped, but round of applause. Oh, sorry. I'm I will not clap for myself. <laughs> Um, I also want to issue a formal apology to Brock, who wanted me to have the podcast continue last week with just me and him. Um, but no. I... <laughs> Alright. So, so I think that came off a little wrong. Um, it, it's like, I'm not pissed because you didn't try to continue with me. It's because I watched it happen. I did nothing with it. <laughs> oh, okay. It was, it was like after you said it wasn't happening, I was like, God damn it. You should have just. I could have I salvaged this. Mm -hmm. You could have pounced in there. Eh, it's all good. Basically, like I was like, oh, that is an option, but I didn't want to like go from having a four-person cast of people who are on every week and be like, here's Brock, and then yeah. me and Brock, and I'm like, how do you feel about Pokemon? And you're like, ah, you know, eh, you know. So I I hate the franchise at this point, but oh. okay. whoa, 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 yes. whoa, whoa, oh, no, okay, whoa. Okay. <laughs> Okay, all right. I'm not, I'm not afraid to get aggressive with this. Well, uh, let's it. get right into it. Speaking of aggressive. Speaking of aggressive, <laughs> um, Sam's not on this week. <laughs> 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 Sam is 0 for 2 in the last two weeks. Uh, can we get a big time yikes for Sam Neal? Where did he go? Uh, I don't know, bro. Is he ever going to stream yeah. again? Is he dead? Did he die? It's because it's he's busy making um, Slay the Spire content. Yeah, right. he's too busy have... watching Slay the Spire. I have a theory. Okay. This has been just a setup. It's a it's a marketing ploy. Okay. He's gonna come back. It's gonna be the rebirth of Zerob. <laughs> he's gonna like play it up like he's Jesus coming back to town. <laughs> like, oh man, content boy, he's coming back. Oh my god. I I would 
really prefer that to whatever whatever he's actually <laughs> scheming right now i hope he rebrands everything and that's what he does he comes back on you know friday or saturday or whatever and he's like okay you know what it's jesus time here we go yeah, it's <laughs> like his his profile picture is just a shitty photoshop of his face on jesus like you know how it's like his face on sonic right now oh god it's, it's his face on jesus that's what's gonna happen. <laughs> well uh one can only hope sam uh does in fact have the uh, Easter Sunday miracle happen and he's on next week uh, but until then <laughs> we have us four fine fucks uh, so the first topic we have here this was uh, kind of the f the first thing to really get me in a Pokemon mood for this week so do you guys remember um, Sword and Shield when it first uh, was starting to come out it was about what like a week or two uh, before the release uh, the entire Pokedex was leaked like everything mm -hmm in there was leaked we even saw shit we were definitely not supposed to see even until recently um including melmetal uh, gigantamax like we knew all about that even before the game came out um and that was a big deal you know i i know oh, yeah. even between us a lot of like half and half on if we wanted to see it or not uh, but only just recently the, the nintendo ninja strike and uh, I don't know if this is the sole person who was responsible for the leaks to start, but this is one of the major players. Uh, there was somebody who Nintendo and slash Game Freak, they gave like a review copy to, uh, and this person was kind of the start of a lot of these major leaks that were happening. Uh, so the Nintendo ninjas sniffed out where it came from and they, they found this dude and they like issued like a whole we are not going to be collaborating at all with this company from here on out on anything because they have leaked it. So the fucking Nintendo Ninjas are back at it again. Oh. Um, and uh, honestly, they, I don't know. It's always interesting because <laughs> Nintendo, like, you know, they're like Mario and, you know, you know, all this <laughs> nice stuff. But the Nintendo Ninjas are real and they just straight up come after people. I think the last time we saw the Nintendo Ninjas, like, in full force was... Uh, just before E3, there was somebody who claimed to know everything that Nintendo was going to be releasing at E3. And then they came out and said, well, I was told by a lawyer from Nintendo that if I say anything, they're going to come after my ass. So I have Damn. to keep my lips shut. And that was when we got Banjo. That was the, that was the E3 just recently where we got Banjo. So uh, that it was kind of like a little bit of a leak almost just because we knew Nintendo had to be packing something if, if they were going to make this guy shut his ass up. Um, so what do you guys feel about the Nintendo Ninjas? Brock, I know this is a lot to be thrown at you this first time on the show. How do you feel about uh, Pokemon and Nintendo coming after these leakers? Uh, I, I, th I, I think... Uh... You think it's justified? It. Yeah, I think I think it's pretty justified. I mean, what the, what the hell are you doing? Yeah. With, like, sure, there's like a minority that wants them, but like everybody else is like, bro, shut the fuck up. No one, no one's no. I, I agree with that. I think the the leaks they come from a place because Sword and Shield it was a lot different than Sun and Moon because Sun and Moon a lot of people complain that we pretty much knew like everything about the game before it came out just because of all the announcements Game Freak was hitting us with like we knew pretty much all the brand new Alolan forms all the new Pokemon all this shit but then when it came to Sword and Shield they did the complete opposite we didn't even know what the starters evolved into. Um, so I think that's why the leaks were such a big deal. So that's probably why the Nintendo Ninjas were out in full force. Isaiah, do you think Nintendo should have came after this man so ruthlessly? So ruth? <laughs> probably, yeah. I mean, you're... I, what? I mean... You're, you sign a lot of contracts when you get... You receive class... Mm-hmm. Like, if you're gonna leak like that and not cover your tracks... Well, like avoid me yeah <laughs> being sniped by the nintendo ninjas then kind of had it come i think it's for sure like, yeah <laughs> i mean and like the thing is i don't even think it's that big of a deal anyways because how like it's really hard nowadays to even like tell the truth from like anyways so like who's even to say like he even like didn't just like throw out like a wild guess like, like it's i don't know i think it's i think it's a, I, I think people are making a bigger deal of it <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 I think I'm on that side too. Um, the, the Sword and Shield leaks were a pretty big deal just because we, we straight up got like that, the whole, like almost like a fucking spreadsheet of all the sprites that were in the game's code. Uh, I even made a video right. about that, which got like a lot of views on my channel. So it was like a big deal. And like everybody was right. making 
uh, videos and talk about all the new Pokemon. They're like, oh my god, look, the new Gigantamax form. So, um, personally, yeah, I, I think they should have came after him. Jake, what do you think? Should the Nintendo Ninjas be uh, so agile and after these people? Is it worth all right, it? I I'm gonna come in here with a really, uh, really spicy opinion. Okay. Um, Hot take. Le leakers, leakers are blasphemous and um, <laughs> should should be burning in your um, punishment zone of choice. Gee. Uh, of choice. Yeah, oh yeah. I mean, your your choice. They don't get to choose. They mm -hmm. they deserve the worst. God. I hate leakers, dude. <laughs> it's just straight up. They ruin I, games, I, man. I, it, well, in like example, not a game example, but Harry Potter, right? Big fan of Harry Potter. Oh, Mom's God, a big yeah. fan of Harry Potter too. Holy my sister fuck, yes. spoiled <laughs> Snape's death. My mom got the book a day before, and one of her dumbass friends. Oh my God! Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, Isaiah. That's depressing. Well, dude, but it got spoiled, and it was like. Uh, and also Dumbledore's same thing. What an asshole! You can't just do that to people, man. Mm -hmm. Same thing with think, um, Tony Stark, where they beat yeah. that dude up in line when the like yeah. it was like he was like one of the first people to see the movie. He came out in the line and fucking spoiled it for everybody, and they fucking kicked his ass right there in the movie theater. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he had it coming. Yeah. He definitely had it coming. Uh, I don't know. I I, th I think that um, I appreciate the fact that they're taking a really hardline stance. I think it's so much better to go into a game like you should know what's you should know what you're ex like what to expect, mm -hmm. right? Like you should know some information about it. But the important things, like if I'm going in to play a game based on story, and I'm not saying Pokemon is a story based game because mm -hmm. it's oh my god, so not. <laughs> but if I'm if I'm going in to play a game like that, I as soon as I know the details of that game, all of a sudden the reason why I'm going to play that game is just like gone out the window. Yeah. So yeah, and and I know that there's a market. There there are some people who want to know those things, but like at least wait until release day, man. Yeah, for sure. Like, Chomp in the chat. Um, uh, Tony Stark did not die. I was talking about Tony Romo. Sorry for anybody who hadn't seen Endgame. Uh, continue. Yeah, he went, he pulled out he pulled out the nine. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that was pretty much all that I was gonna say. You know, it's just I. It's so much better too. I think the the what they were doing for um, Sword and Shield, where you're not getting all that kind of information, mm -hmm. as opposed to the earlier games where you're getting it all right away. Like leaving some things up in the air, and you know, when I go into a game, I want to be excited. I want to feel like this is something that I want to be a part of. I want to be able to go in and find new information and do cool things. And if all of that is just out there, then I, you lose that feeling. Yeah, I, I'm for sure on that side. And I honestly, I did, I think I'm on the same side of the sword and shield information. I thought it was really cool um, that um, they didn't actually give us that much information uh, before sword and shield came out. Uh, I thought that was a big deal. That was like, it felt like maybe this is like a big change for Pokemon because like, more and more they were giving us like everything like even in um x and y we saw a little bit of that where they were just kind of giving us like here are all the brand new megas like there's only a couple that we didn't know about prior to the game's release mm. um so i thought it was really cool that they ended up not telling us a lot so it was unfortunate that everything leaked but it was it was good content for the youtube channel so i'm not too mad you know what I'm saying? <laughs> um so uh it, it's another thing it's one of these things that makes me almost really want to pay attention to a lot of other gaming communities because with nintendo we we hear a lot of stuff about stuff leaking like a lot and i i just wonder if this is just like a normal thing for gaming companies or if nintendo they're just like really bad at keeping their shit together like many think... of the smash characters from not only smash 4 but smash ultimate have been leaked um, fucking there was Roy and Ryu footage in Smash 4. There was footage of those characters online before they even got announced because Nintendo, <laughs> they just straight up put the, the characters in the game uh, in, in an update, but like they just hadn't released yet. And everyone's like, oh, who's this? Oh, Ryu's in this game. Oh, that's cool. Wow. And then, you know, shit like wow. that. And um, Hero was also low key leaked because they found like some file names and they kind of translated it and they're like, oh, they, they traced it. They didn't know exactly what Dragon Quest uh, character was going to be, but 
uh, a lot of leakers or hackers and stuff that I was seeing online. They also said they knew about Joker too, which I don't even know how the fuck that happened because Joker was revealed the night yeah. Ultimate came out. So I, yeah. <laughs> leakers are crazy, man. Uh, Terry was also low key leaked because we knew it was going to be an SNK character. Um, so I don't know. Nintendo, they just seem. Remember that bloody really... tears? What's up? Do you remember Buddy Tears? Oh, Yo, yeah. yeah. Simon? Uh, Simon slash Richter, they were leaked, leaked by themselves. Nintendo accidentally because they <laughs> they put the Bloody Tears song. Or <laughs> it, what, what, it was one or the other. They like It was like it was a Pac-Man song, a but they mix. named it Bloody yeah. Tears or something like that. Yeah. Uh, it's, just, uh, it's just sloppy stuff on Nintendo's end. And you know they have to be firing some people. Like, there's no way somebody's keeping their job over that bloody tear shit. Like, you, how do you, how do you not listen to it before you re, like name the video? That feels like a big deal to me. I feel like if you're putting <laughs> files out there for a game that's not out yet, you should at least pay attention to what's happening here. I don't know. That's just me. Um, so on the the thing about it being mostly Nintendo, I think part of that is because Nintendo has so many recognizable IPs and they reuse so many characters in, in different ways that other gaming companies don't really do mm -hmm. and it works for them. And so like we have these attachments to these kinds of characters and want to, you know, like we want to know who's in Smash and, you know, if another third party kind of game came out like that. I kind of like you know think like PlayStation All Stars, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's cool to know who's in that, but I also don't care. Um, yeah, <laughs> and that, that that might just be a me thing. Yeah, but uh, that's that feels like it's part of it, right? Like people mm. people seem more invested in the game characters that Nintendo mm. has just because of the way that Nintendo has set up their brand. Yeah, for sure. And that's that's um, different from other companies. Yeah, Chomp in chat says, yeah, crazy how there's a whole giant powerful community behind impatience over video games. Yeah, that, that that's pretty much exactly what Jake is saying. Like, uh, we're just so in love with these characters. And Smash is mm -hmm. a super duper big deal because, like, now that, like, these DLC characters are becoming... Uh, well, they are supposed to be really hype. <laughs> They're supposed to be a really big deal. They're supposed to have all these crazy characters in. It's everybody wants to know, you know, oh, who's the next character going to be? So that um, definitely is like a lot of motivation for leakers and stuff like that. Um, but we're, yep. getting a, we're getting a tiny bit off topic here. So I'm going to spin it back onto some Pokemon stuff here. Um, yeah, something that wasn't leaked, but um, nobody really cared enough about to leak, I guess. Pokemon Home is finally out into the public um me and jackson yeah. on uh, an evening with the king we talked a little bit about our thoughts on it but it's actually now out into the universe so i kind of want to ask brock uh, so brock have you even played sword and shield is my first question uh okay so sword and shield <laughs> is the first mainline pokemon game i have skipped oof okay so, um, okay well, and because, the, and so and then you cannot answer my question, which was going to be, are you going to get Pokemon Home? I would assume the answer is no, but hey, maybe. If, <laughs> if, if, if like the next game mm -hmm. was like actually had content mm -hmm. and was worth getting, then yeah, I would probably do it. Okay. But at this point, no. Mm -hmm. Okay, I feel that. That, that, that. That's a wise answer, especially if you don't have Sword and Shield. Like it's probably, it makes sense to, to wait on it. Um, Isaiah, what are you thinking? So you have Sword and Shield, right? Have you actually beat Sword and Shield yet, Isaiah? Yes, I have beaten okay. the Sword and Shield. I have beaten the secondary campaign. Ta I have, uh, what secondary campaign? Sorry. <laughs> secondary campaign. <laughs> oh, dude, up top. <laughs> oh. uh, well, okay, so I have... Do, do we, is it time to talk about it? Talk about what? I, I just want to know... So I, I need to make sure you're actually playing Sword and Shield, but my, my main question is, are you gonna get Pokemon Home? And if yes or no, why? Okay, well, so what I was, what I was uh, advertised and what I, well, okay. Pre, pre-purchasing, before purchasing Pokemon Home, yes, I wanted to get Pokemon Home. Oh, because okay. Because I heard there were like some fun new little trade features that you could do like uh what like group trading yeah like wonder trading and like, stuff yeah everyone's just like everyone just gets in a big group and you like trade pokemon like uh yeah wonder trade or what, whatever they call it uh surprise trading that's what they call it mm, yeah, yeah everyone like just throws a pokemon in and everyone else gets one it's like whoa i got fucking majors shitty ass pikachu <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> but um but yeah i also i want to save my pokemon that are stuck Pokemon Go. Mm -hmm. 
Um, <laughs> there's some really cool Pokemon in there, but it's just like trapped. I don't play that game. <laughs> I just want to save it. Yeah, <laughs> that, that makes sense, yeah. Yeah, so that's why I need So So what made you not want to get it then? Well, I got it. Oh, you did? Oh, okay. Yeah. Hooray! <laughs> yeah. I, th I, I thought that the, the, the stinger was that you, like, there was something that made you not want to get it. There's something that made me sad about it, but... Oh, okay. And? After owning it. Well, it's not what it was advertised. Ooh. Or I'm just a fucking dumbass. I can't, <laughs> for the life of me, figure out at all how to trade on the Switch version. Oh, do well, you have the paid? Or, so you have the paid version? Is... No, I have the unpaid version. Oh, yeah, okay. I, I think you I'm... can't. So Probably I why. think um, one of the so the free version is mega limited. Like there's almost nothing you can do compared to the paid well, version. Okay, so here's the thing. I was reading an article. Okay. Before this game drop, and I was trying to read some of the the things that like the differences, mm -hmm. right? And there was like limited box size. I was like, okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Um, and then there was also uh limited trading yes you can it, it, i was advertised i remember being advertised you could still trade it was just limited the ways you could do it but i don't even see an option just straight up on my screen i think at least the information that i looked into is um if you trade if like are you trying to trade with like another person or like it's price trade. just trying to try to hmm interesting yeah it's something i remember it's like you if you'd have the free version you yourself you can't make a trading room like you have to you can only join one like there's a lot of limitations so that yeah is, i'll have it, to figure all that out cause yeah I, so free I version is kind of trash um jake i gotta ask Hello. for your opinion you are in fact mr pokemon himself uh how do you feel I about am. pokemon home and are you slash have you gotten it I just want to lay claim to the title of Mr. Pokemon. I have the nicest Rapidash. Nobody <laughs> else. Um, I am the president of the Pokemon fan club. Uh, I don't know if I'm getting Pokemon Home. Uh, I oh, haven't, interesting. I haven't. Okay. So Pokemon games, to me, they at least the most recent ones, they lose a lot of replayability. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. Um, Facts. And... It, I, it might just be because of their super heavy emphasis on story or whatever mm. but I, whenever I'm done playing a new one I'm like yeah but I could be doing anything else Ooh, like, I, okay. don't wanna, I don't want to play this anymore mm -hmm. so, but why though yeah yes, <laughs> I'll probably end up getting it if only because I have so many Pokemon that are like trapped inside uh, what was a Pokemon box Pokemon bank yeah the, bank yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, i'm just, same yeah i just same. put them in a cardboard box but, <laughs> um no all those ones in there like i might do it just to get those free you know mm -hmm. but i don't know i pokemon home just seems like a weird in i i haven't like looked at all their features and stuff like what isaiah was talking about was new to me mm -hmm. but it's just like kind of a weird rebranding of pokemon bank like why aren't we just extending pokemon bank into switch version version mm -hmm. and maybe it's just because of how it works over cross-platform whatever but the fact that people are paying again for the same service is a little is like big suspect. question marks for me yeah, yeah. so um uh, i agree jake i'm not gonna lie i was Assuming that you're going to be like, hell yeah, Pokemon Bank, that's my shit. I don't know, because you're Mr. Uh, Pokemon. Um, but I'm glad <laughs> to see we're all at least a little sus of Pokemon Home. Um, <laughs> and I, th I think for good reason. Like I said, um, on an evening with the King, uh, me and Jackson talked a lot about it. But uh, like Jake said, it it's just a little sus to be paying for the service again. Because honestly, it doesn't really have that many features that makes me go, hell yeah, I really need to pick that up. Um mm -hmm. It's, it's what, $16 a year if you pick like the best price point or whatever, which is three times more than Pokemon Bank. And to be honest, it's it's not really doing a lot more than that. Um, and it's it's actually kind of asking for a lot for 16 bucks because some of the features that it promised are not even ready to go yet. So the, the Pokemon yeah. Go compatibility is not ready to go yet with the release version not. of the game. And we I don't think they gave us a firm date on when that's happening. Um, and pretty much, yeah, that's the really big feature that I saw in it. 
Uh, like Isaiah said, if you have all those Pokemon and Pokemon Go that you want to let free, um, you, that, that's there's, the only that's the only way to do it, really. There's kind of a workaround. Mm -hmm. So there's an area in Let's Go. Okay, so that's why I'm playing Let's Go Eevee right now. Is there's an area in Let's Go Eevee where you can get your Pokemon Go Pokemon? Oh, that's true. Yeah, you can you can swap into Let's so Go. You can get them into Eevee, and you can get them from Eevee into Home. Mm -hmm. So, but that's one. Mm -hmm. but that's that's even another big issue that i have with it is they they put out like that infographic of what's possible um like the mm -hmm. the trading system and i think it's kind of bs that there's only like a lot of one-way trading between games like uh obviously mm -hmm. it's understandable for like uh let's go ev because like that's the Kanto region so that makes sense that like you couldn't put like dialga in there or something like that but there's a lot of right. one-way trading in that once you take something out of Pokemon Go, you can't put things into Pokemon Go. Once you take stuff out of Let's Go Eevee and Pikachu, you can't put stuff back in. And I know the thought process behind it is like the stats and like the abilities and like everything's weird between those games. But I don't know, for paid service, it feels like they could accomplish that for, for the money they're asking for it. Um, and especially since like, like, like Jake said, like it feels like it's just a continuation of bank. They're just asking a lot more money for. So I don't know. It's it, it's just a lot of suspect kind of stuff they're asking for here. If I'm honest, um, and, and and on top of the fact that you still, if you have uh, Pokemon in Pokemon Bank, so let's say you were doing uh, another playthrough of Pokemon Diamond on the DS, and you want to get Pokemon <clears throat> over to Pokemon Sword and Shield. So this is a process you have to go through. You have to have Pokemon Diamond. You have to have a DS. You have to pay for Pokemon Bank, which is five dollars a year, which is a fucking highway robbery because you're gonna pay five dollars for a yearly service that you're about to use one time just to get stuff over to pokemon home you're gonna then transfer things to pokemon home which costs 16 dollars a year for that you need nintendo online you need a switch obviously and you need to have a copy of pokemon sword slash shield which is kind of crazy if you're asking me like that's a lot of money in that whole ecosystem going around there if you mm -hmm. add it all Which up together. It's also introducing paid DLC to introduce old yes, Pokemon. Yes, and uh, that yeah, I was going to touch on that too. So, from the old games. Yeah, so if you wanted your Talonflame or your Garchomp, because I think those are Pokemon that are coming out in the next DLC packs. Yeah, yep. so now you have to spend money on the expansion passes. If you are a poor soul and you bought both Sword and Shield, that is, that's a lot of money <laughs> there. That is a pretty penny to have your fucking Piplup, which, by <laughs> the way, can't even be in Sword and Shield. There are no Piplups or Chimchars or Turtwigs. Or Jigglypuffs. Or Jigglypuffs. <laughs> and um, I don't know. It's just a sus ecosystem they have going on. You're spending a lot of money for a lot of limitations, really, is what it feels like. So. I mentioned it, but even on top of all of that, mm -hmm. it doesn't like cost money. Mm. Like, just to even be online to use those services it costs what 20 20 bucks a year 20 bucks right? a year if you yeah, yeah. if you have like the single the plan single person yeah mm -hmm. and you know it's i don't know man they're asking for a lot of they're asking for a lot of money when it comes to good old pokemon if i'm honest so i know there's there's some related server costs and and whatever else but just just home on top of everything else on top of bank, on top of online services, on top of DLC, that it's... On top of buying buy with. <laughs> on top of buying buy with. <laughs> on top of buying the inevitable uh, Pokemon DLC in the next pack. Mm -hmm. We're gonna have um, we're gonna have Rillaboom. He's coming. Rillaboom. Yeah, here he comes. Uh, Trent, Trent, I'm happy. He said, "Well, you all just saved me a lot of money from buying the game at all." <laughs> so, <laughs> you, you, Trent, you have made the correct decision. You here. have made the correct decision. Um, honestly, uh, this is—I think this is the really the first time um, where I've—I've I've really understand the feelings of like anti Pokemon people. Um, Ultra Sun was the first Pokemon game I played it, and I was like. Uh, like uh, what am I doing right now why am I playing this and a lot of people started talking shit about Sun and Moon I one thing I don't like is when Sun and Moon dropped there was tons of praises for it uh, and then like over time everybody people would be saying that's the worst Pokemon game uh, really? nowadays which is kind of crazy that the opinions flip flop so much um, and honestly I don't hate it uh, so I, I but like it's one of those games where if you play it a second time you will have so much pain 
playing that game. Like the first playthrough, it seems pretty decent. If you try to go through it again in Ultra Sun, <clears throat> it is it is not worth it. So Pokemon has been on the decline. Um, so hey, you know now that we're all in high spirits, um, are we kind of already high touched? Uh, we already touched on this. Um, this whole are you fine with this model going forward? But I want to ask. Uh, more specifically, uh, so we're getting these expansion packs for Sword and Shield, and they name dropped the fact that um, in the past we've had like Diamond Pearl and then Platinum or uh, Ruby Sapphire Emerald, and they were like, these are different than that. This is going to be the expansion pass. Do you think we are going to get Sword and Shield 2 anyways? Jake, what do you think? No, I think they'll stick to what they were saying. Okay. Um, it just... Yeah, Faith. The fact... The fact that they went through like X and Y and did the same thing, you know, mm. Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon. Uh, I'm just gonna pretend that those games don't exist, <laughs> and that'll make me a happier man than otherwise. Mm -hmm. um, I'm happy, but for you, I, I think. Oh, thank you. Um, I, I, they're not gonna like seriously put out a game that's Sword and Shield too. Mm -hmm. They might put out something like a definitive edition. Yeah, like mm. it'll be if they put out anything like that, it's gonna be some something weird. Yeah. But I think more more likely than anything else, they're just gonna move on to whatever their next title is. Gotcha. Brock, do you have faith that Game Freak will not release Sword and Shield 2? What do you think? I have <laughs> I've ever ever since like uh Sun and Moon, Ultra Sun and Moon, it's just like please release something that's um worthwhile worth the price. Oof. <laughs> no, it's like it's like what what was it every game up until uh sword and shield was 40 dollars i think uh mm -hmm. yeah I, or like 3ds games yeah i think the average price was 40 and then like ds games were around 30 i think so it's it like 30 40 i up think i paid 60 for ev yeah, yeah yeah switch games yeah 60 so it's it's like 30 40 and then the last two games were just 60s mm -hmm. and it's and they have the they have the the content mm -hmm. amounts of like like red and blue. Yeah, like Heart Gold Soul Silver have more content, and they are like thirty five bucks when they came out. So it's like it's, almost it's half like, the amount of money they're asking for just plain Sword Shield. And, and it's just like if they do a like quote unquote ultra equivalent of Sword and Shield. Mm -hmm. Uh, I I I I think I would put money on them having those games being the equivalent of ultra sun and moon mm -hmm. but like including the dlc they have at the moment mm -hmm. or planning on releasing that would be unfortunate Amazing. isaiah mm -hmm. what do you think do you think game freak is gonna hit us with sharp sword and strong shield well first you got it all wrong it'd be strong sharp mm. secondly <laughs> secondly i don't uh i don't I haven't had enough time to think about that. Uh, I don't think they will. I, I want to say no, just because of the scope of the game. It's one thing to make like another Sun and Moon, but it's another like another field. Yeah. The whole open. I want to say they, but that's just that's just hopeful thing. I think, <laughs> I think, personally. Just the way they talked about it in like the presentation where they like straight up name drop like third versions where they're like this is different makes me feel like they won't do it but honestly it seems like the Game Freak like money strategy is they're just kind of seeing what they can get away with. Like pretty much it feels like that's what their business model is right now. They're just kind of seeing like what all people are willing to pay for. It's like the whole like oh, if something was a dollar and then you get up to the cashier and he's like, actually, this is a dollar and one cent. And you're like, oh, you know, that's fine. Or like next time he's like, actually, it's a dollar and two cents. You're like, yeah, you know, it's fine. It's like, what's what's the stopping point? When, when are they asking for too much money for not enough value? Uh, so they're really kind of testing us, I think. Um, and that started with not all the Pokemon being in Sword and Shield. Graphics not really being great. They're not being a lot of content. <laughs> You know, all of these, all of these numerous mouse. things. And now they're like, haha, $30 and you can get the other half of the game. And then you're like, oh, you know, okay. Oh, $16 and you can import uh, Garchomp back into your game. You know, uh, they're kind of testing what they can get away with. So I think, 
I'm gonna say, I think it's likely that we get something like this. Like maybe not a straight up ultra shield and ultra sword, but maybe like a definitive edition that comes with the DLC and then like the national decks. I do just want to say that Garchomp is extremely worth sixteen dollars. <laughs> um, probably the right. best Pokemon ever in the game. Mm -hmm. I would pay sixteen dollars for fucking top one. Um, I would buy another game. Sure I would buy another edition if Jigglypuff was. You would spend sixty dollars <laughs> on the same game, but it just has Jigglypuff in it. Yes, <laughs> I would in a heartbeat. Because if I am honest to God, serious. I foresee that happening. It is the exact same game. It just has the DLC with it, and it has all the Pokemon in it. Well, well, Corey, they have me. In the, they have me roped. <laughs> they have a confirmed sale right there. What I say? Confirmed sale. You're, they have an IOU. You have one sale. Mm -hmm. There you go, Game Freak. So they, they're set. Their investor meeting. It's going good right now. They have at least one sale. Um. So they're so right <laughs> so like Jake said here, where he thinks they're kind of going to move on to whatever the next project be. So this is another kind of prediction I'm asking for. Jake, if mm. Sword and Shield 2, or even if Sword and Shield 2 is the next game, do you think they are scheming up making Gen 4 remakes right now? Oh. For the viewers at home, Gen 4, Diamond and Pearl remakes. DS games, first Pokemon games on the DS. Dialga? N Dialga, yes sir. That's a hard one, because it feels, if. At least to me, from my perspective, it feels like they didn't really want to make Omega Ruby and uh, Alpha Sapphire. You think right? so? Yeah. But I don't know. If they feel like they're going to get enough money out of it, yeah, they're going to. Mm -hmm. Like, And they will get enough money out of it. So I let me change my answer. Yes. <laughs> um, when you put it all together, yes. <laughs> I don't think they should. I, I don't think they'll be unless they completely reframe who is working on it and mm -hmm. what's going on there I think that it's going to be an experience that maybe like stirs up that nostal nostalgia in you and you're like oh cool I remember when I walked on this route for the first time with my piplup um, but it's not going to be innovative or cool. It's just going to kind of be like, cool, I'm, I'm doing the same thing again and giving money for the same thing again. So I would, I think it'd be great if they did it and they did it awesomely, but I don't mm -hmm. think they're going to do it awesomely. I think it's just going to be another rehash of stuff we've already seen. And that's yeah. a little disappointing for me. I, um, I think when you put it like that, it is a lot more depressing because every time I've had this conversation <laughs> about diamond and pearl, it's, it's been a question of will they, um, never has it come to my mind, should they? Uh, which is kind of sad. Um, I brought this up on a podcast before with Sam. Um, and he said one of his buddies pitched the idea that they might do Let's Go Diamond and Pearl. Oh, God. And that would be, oh, I think yes, that please. would, I would love that. I think that would be the most soul crushing thing for Game Freak to do. Um, <laughs> but at, at the same I... time, like, the same time when he said that, it wasn't even like a, Oh, that would be awful, you know. They would never do that though. Like it's definitely on the table. Somebody has mm. pitched that at Game Freak. <laughs> I feel <Is> like. <laughs> so, bro. Okay, well, I enjoy oh, Let's Go. Isaiah, go ahead. Do you enjoy Let's Go Eevee? Let's hear about it. I do enjoy Let's Go Eevee. Okay. I never played Pokémon Red. And I th never, I, I ever. think you're the target market though. I think they're, they're Game Freak is I don't even know if Game Freak is the one who developed that. Isn't is that confirmed that it Game is. Freak? Okay, they did. Okay, I just didn't because I, I know they were like, oh, this isn't a main series Pokemon game, blah blah blah. So I don't know if they were that separate from it. But um, so yes, Isaiah, I think you are literally the target market though for Let's Go Eevee and Pikachu, well, aimed at people who haven't played me. Pokemon a lot. It would kind of suck if they only marketed games who like have only only towards the people that have grown up playing the games. That's it's hard to build a new audience when you mm -hmm. only build the games for that audience. That's I, true. I have nothing against. Mm. Sorry. No, go, go ahead. No, I was yeah, say nothing ahead. against people who like you all grew up with the game and stuff, mm -hmm. but like, for I mean me, just an example. I, my first game was Sun and Moon. No, no, no. My first game was, what was before Sun? And Moon? It was Omega, like some Omega. Weird, like gen, rubies. Yeah, I uh, I got one of those, and um, I played that one because Jackson gave it. 
Yeah, I remember. And everyone else played Pokemon. I was like, oh, sure, I want to try. But it was really hard for me to get into it at first because, like, a lot of the stuff I was like, I, it was really, really tricky to get into. It felt pretty overwhelming. Mm -hmm. I feel but, that. But Pokemon Eevee is very nice. It guided me. <laughs> <laughs> See some characters. Like, I didn't know who Brock was. I knew Brock. Oh, was. me either, dude. <laughs> wow. Dude, dude. Oh, me I didn't know. until this podcast. <laughs> dude, dude, like, nobody Misty? knows who Brock is. I didn't know Misty. I didn't know Professor Shock. What's his name? Uh, Surge, Mr. Surge. <laughs> Professor Shock, <laughs> the Shocker. <laughs> Dude, all of these characters that I, I was like assumed to have to know, but mm -hmm. I don't know. It was nice. Yeah, I, 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 I vibe with that. that. And like I said, yeah, I'm pretty sure you are like the direct target market. And your point about um, Pokemon like shouldn't be just only directed to people who are Pokemon fans. Um, honestly, they they're at a weird impasse with who they want their target market to be because it seems like they want the best of both worlds because they they every trailer for sword and shield and even i think in sun and moon where they bring up they're like if this is you know your hundredth pokemon game or this is your first pokemon game this is gonna be a damn good game you're really gonna enjoy this so they they, <laughs> they bring up the fact damn. that they're like they, they bring up the fact that like this could be your first pokemon game and you'll love it um, but they also do like the Gen One like boomer pandering at the same time, uh, and it's like it's they they want the best of both worlds. Like they assume like oh we're gonna get the Gen One so our old fans love us, but we're gonna make all this new stuff so new like you know ten year old kids love us. But then you know it doesn't mesh well, and like nobody likes it. <laughs> that's, that's what it feels like because. Pokemon fans complain when Gen 1 is crammed in their faces. Fucking Professor Oak is back for the 10 millionth time! Why is he the face of Pokemon Home? That makes no damn Brad sense! Oak. Who cares about fucking Professor Oak anymore? Why? Go away! He's in Sun and Moon. He's in All Let's right. Go. And now he's back in Pokemon Home for Gen 8. I don't understand what they're doing. Anyways, that is a completely different thing. But, like, long-time Pokemon <laughs> fans, they don't want Gen 1. That, that's not what they want. And little Timmy here doesn't give a damn about Pokemon. He plays Fortnite. So... Both of their target audiences are pissed at them, or they don't care. It's like, what are we doing here? They don't know shit. They just make these games, hope people buy them, and then fucking Sword and Shield's fastest selling Switch game of all time. So, yeah, and so they're like, say, cool, it's oh, working. Do it more. Fucking hell. I'm pissed now. Are you doing okay, something Corey? right because people are buying them. My face is legit like all red right now. <laughs> <laughs> Brock. Do you think the Gen 4 remakes are coming? And if they're coming, do you think it's going to be Let's Go Diamond and Pearl? Uh, I do think they're coming because it's it's, it's money. Um, but do I think it's going to be like the Let's Go? Um, I don't think they would. If they're going to do another Let's Go, it's, it's, it has to be Johto. Mm -hmm. But if they do end up making Gen 4 remakes... I, I just hope it's going to be like Poraz, I guess. Uh, so it's, it's, my question. So, so Brad, have you played Oras? Yeah, I, I've played every mainline. Okay. Up until Sword and Shield. How do you feel about Oras? You think it's good or bad? Uh, I, I found I found it to be uh pretty decent. Decent. Okay. I mean, I mean, I'm I'm not very uh judgmental critical with pokemon games very very critical <laughs> i feel that very okay. big issues with it that mm -hmm. i have um it, it's like to the, i still go back and play it mm -hmm. versus like sun and moon yeah i feel that but basically i was just kind of getting at because i know i know people have looked down upon omega ruby and alpha sapphire ever came out and i, I just want to come from a place of like i don't necessarily know why because uh, maybe i'm in the minority here because i never actually played the original ruby and sapphire at least when i was growing up i went back and played them like yeah. later in life um so maybe that's like the reason why i actually had a decent time playing through omega ruby enough sapphire i actually played competitive and did shiny hunting and all that yeah. in that game um so personally i think if the diamond and pearl remakes happened and they were in the style of omega ruby and alpha sapphire i think i'd have a good time with that game yeah, I, yeah I, I, would, I would be fine with it omega Very ruby middle alpha, of the road they, yeah they seem like like decent you know faithful remakes and they have enough like differences that um that they seem 
interesting. And one thing I will die on this hill, if the Diamond of Pearl remakes happen, if they are in the style of an actual remake, not Let's Go, yeah. and there is not Mega Evolution in it, I'm gonna be mad. <laughs> Can I jump in on the uh, talking about Oras real quick? Yes, please do. Go for it. Go. I am <laughs> someone who does not like it. Very you do much. not like it. So like, I do not like you don't like it much. as in like during your initial playthrough, you're like, what the fuck am I playing? Uh, or like, did you beat it? And then you look back on it and you're like, yeah, that wasn't great. No, it was definitely while I was playing it. Okay. And it's not that it's bad. Okay. It is objectively not a bad game, I think. Um, but it also felt like the start of and x and y was kind of this way too but it felt like the start of those games that um that 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 string of pokemon games that were just really subpar um a big thing that i didn't like about it was that it was too similar to the other games like there was the cool you know like after after story kind of thing with Zinnia and whatever, you know, like yeah, 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 for sure, yeah, Delta. hunting Rayquaza and all that. Um, and there's like the the really weird and kind of unnecessary plot line in the middle of the game with the Lotties that give you a really powerful. Oh yeah, where they're like, no here's Mega Latios, you can fly yeah. on him, fly forever. Yeah, and, <laughs> you know, it's it. The thing that I liked about the other two remakes was that it added content in kind of a meaningful way. Mm -hmm. Um between the Sevi Islands, which as up until that point, you know, it's kind of unheard of because it was the first remake of the game and all that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And um, all of the extra stuff that Heart Gold Soul Silver added, it Oras just kind of didn't didn't meet that mark for me. Okay. Um, and I, I, I hope I hope that if they do do a remake, I hope that it'll be sort of like it but it i don't know I, I don't want it to be exactly like oras i want it to bring something like we can remake uh diamond pearl and platinum all we want but i want it to have like a little bit that makes it special to you me. don't want it to just be like a fresh coat of paint like you want it to like yeah. actually have things to yeah, do give me something something new something that makes it exciting and a reason why i'd buy this one instead of just replaying the game that i already have i, I can feel that yeah um i yeah i i, I think i'm on the same side as that um, I I think it would be nice even if the, it was like a faithful remaster like all they do is just you know new graphics um, you know add like a tiny bit of things like they did Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire um, I think I'd be okay with that I, I'd be happy with that game playing it uh, I love Diamond and Pearl Sinnoh region um, but my, my worry is that they do remake it and it's they they kind of like take it down a notch because one thing i've talked about a lot with jackson his main thing he brings it up every time we talk about a diamond and pearl remake he was like you know what they're gonna do for diamond and pearl remakes they're gonna at the old chateau like in the eterna forest he's like for some reason there's going to be an npc outside and they're gonna be like whoa little timmy don't go in here because there's ghosts and shit and he's gonna be like, just so you know, there's like this weird appearance. There's like this TV upstairs. And if you go knock on it at this direct time, there's this orange guy. He just might come out, but I don't know. It's just a rumor. So like basically his whole thing is that um, they're gonna dumb it down and it's not gonna be like a faithful remaster. They're not gonna keep all that like original kind of Sinnoh love they have in there. Like uh, kind of like we were saying, like the, a lot of the games are kind of subpar and they kind of want to make it like yeah, um, I don't know. There's just a lot different, and they're not as difficult. Things like that, and not to say Diamond of Pearl is like the hardest game in the world or anything, but I think it's it's like a widely known internet meme that the Cynthia fight is is pretty tough. Uh, at least like your first go through it when you're like ten. Uh, so stuff like that. I, I'm just afraid that they would not recreate it in such a way that would be meaningful and kind of like uh, respectful to the original games. That's what I would be worried about. And honestly, if they do make a Diamond of Pearl remake and it's supposed to be a serious one and it isn't good. I, there might be like a fatal blow to Pokemon like that might be one of the last nails in the coffin for a lot of people if they try to cash it in on Sinnoh nostalgia and it fails it could be kind of a death blow to Game Freak honestly like I don't think they'll ever be down and out like Pokemon is one of the most successful franchises ever like across all the shit they have but I think that would really like make a lot of fans not trust Game Freak anymore personally that's what I think 
I don't know if anybody yeah. can. Yeah. I uh, I have one piece of advice for okay. a game freak, and that is please make a good game. <laughs> please. Because it it's good. like. I'm happy. If if it's a good game, man, mm -hmm. I'm gonna be okay. Yeah. It, it doesn't have to be a perfect game. Just just a good one. Retweet. Isaiah. Hi. <laughs> have you ever played the original Diamond and Pearl? No. Do you know anything about it? ADP. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Arsis <laughs> Dialgapalkia. <laughs> um, so if there was a Diamond and Pearl remake and it was like a serious remake, so it wasn't like Let's Go, would you be interested in it as a like semi-Pokemon fan? Jigglypuff was in that one. Yes. I'd probably be. <laughs> <laughs> probably. <laughs> I don't know. I. It's just another Pokemon game. I'd probably get it. I. Uh, that was so no, sad. I have, I have <laughs> it's no, just another Pokemon. I'll so probably sad. get it. <laughs> it. I mean. Yeah. Okay. Here's the deal, yo. Every okay. time a new one of these comes out, it's the same game. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Which is like, okay, that's that's the deal. I signed up for this when I yeah. started getting into Pokemon. And you know, I, I've kind of just come to good terms with it. You know? <laughs> it's like, I'm I'm enjoying playing a new version of this every time, and I'm kind of just for that experience. I'm well, okay I, with that. I can respect that. I mean, honestly, that's probably where the people are at. Like, the people who are excited for Sword and Shield, the people who are excited for the DLC, people who are excited for Home, like... That's probably the mindset they're in, where it's just like, mm -hmm. fuck it, whatever. I, I, you know, I'm in for the long haul at this point. That's, I mean, that's pretty much where I am. I think I'm just more vocal on the bullshit. Um, but I, I'm st like, no matter what happens, like, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I'll buy Sword and Shield too. Sure, I'll buy Let's Go Diamond. The... Sure, I'm down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just don't know any of like the the really. Yeah. So I... like, I don't have an attachment to any of them, mm -hmm. except for Sun Moon. They should make a new Sun. Ultra, I ultra sun that. and moon? Yes. <laughs> Mega sun and moon? God. I am so down. Hey, speaking of sun and moon, uh, you know, oh. sun and moon was uh, the last game, uh, last generation. Obviously, we now have sword and shield. Uh, so now with Cosmic Eclipse, the last sun and moon TCG set, uh, that is a fucking godlike name if you ask me. Cosmic Eclipse for the last sun and moon set? Like, come on. that, that Whoever made that was a genius. I got to applaud them. They're not at Game Freak, you know, they're on the TCG side of, <laughs> side of things. So the Sword and Shield base set is now out, TCG. Um, Brock, you dabble a little bit in the TCG, right? A little bit? Uh, I never played it seriously. I okay. Just, uh, I, Jake, you collect, right? Or you've been buying packs recently. Yes. Right? Okay, so you guys are, you. the Neils are a little more casual with it, I take it. Yeah. Okay. I am at least. Okay, and then so me and Isaiah were actually in the thick of it with the cards and stuff. Isaiah's printing off, you know, oh boy. 65 proxies. Uh, <laughs> hey, we're buying the cards though. Okay, yes. Uh, uh, it was just funny to play like your full proxy deck, which I respect. It's probably better than like actually, you know, making the deck and being like, well, shit, this isn't actually good or I don't actually like this well, or whatever. I'm actually glad because when we first played, I kind of got trounced. But we upgraded the deck, and if I had bought that version, I would have been really sad. <laughs> you would have. <laughs> so, Isaiah, um, can you give us a little narrative for us uh, of your Pokemon <laughs> TCG journey now that Sword and Shield is out, and um, your your previous deck, and then what they've done to that deck, and now now why you're like a nomad searching for new land? <laughs> do, I, do I really need to talk about this? <laughs> that's something that needs to happen i just want to kind of okay. throw it out there like for context on where we're at like friend group wise for the tcg <gasps> okay um so i don't know if anyone's been listening uh occasionally on here i've mentioned jigglypuff <laughs> once or twice <laughs> and you might have picked up that that just might be favorite your favorite well, Pokemon, yes. It turns out that that favoritism also extends to the type of Pokemon that Jigglypuff is. Okay. Oh, wow. Oh. Isn't that great? So, uh, that type being fairy. Fairy type, which 
you know. Um, well, isn't she normal? She's a normal type. She was she started normal. She was normal she was until X and Y. They made her fairy. That's what it was. Yeah. Okay. Anyways. Uh. So yeah, my current deck is um as close, basically as close to control as you can get in Pokemon, because Pokemon's weird like that. Uh, I play um a Guardian deck. And it's sort of toolboxy with a bunch of trainers and supporters, and it runs like five Pokemon, which is a playset of Guardian, and a uh, Mega Punny Jigglypuff mm -hmm. set. Guardian so, for the folks so, at home that don't play is Gardevoir Sylveon ta tag team. Yeah, Gardevoir Sylveon tag team. The whole deck is centered around um, being able to move energy around on my Pokemon mm -hmm. and having a GX move that just makes someone's magical hand go miracle away. GX. <laughs> magical <laughs> miracle GX. So, yeah, essentially, um, essentially the dealio is that I, uh, <laughs> I, oh god. I, so I really like this deck, and I've been having a lot of fun. It's the only deck I have because I invest in other card games too, and it's really expensive to try to keep up with three card games at once. So I only have the one deck. Then, come to find, in the release of Sword and Shield, they made an announcement that they would be removing <laughs> fairy-type Pokemon from the game. <laughs> they, there Corey. are no more... <laughs> Fairy typing is not a thing anymore in the Pokemon TCG. They were moving all fairies. Just, yeah. <laughs> Why you gotta make this man talk about the death of his beloved? <laughs> like... Okay, so... To, for, they're not, like, retroactively, like, removing fairy types from the game. Like, uh, Isaiah's my days deck... Are numbered. Is, yeah, but from going forward, they're not making any more fairy Pokemon, so Isaiah's deck will never have, like, new things to add to it. It's just gonna stay stagnant and eventually die. This new set? Die. Mega depressing, because there were no, literally no new cards to add to the deck. I was literally <laughs> thinking of every potential card I could add to this deck, and, like, nothing. <laughs> Like not not a card, oh. maybe a Pokemon catcher <laughs> instead of a great catcher. Yeah. But literally, uh, yeah. So we made we had to make do. We had to make you no. Know, we had to start over, <laughs> just like I had to in basically every other card game I'm playing right now. <laughs> so, I just wanted to throw that out there because I, I I was thanks, sure thanks, we were gonna get. For... I, I, was, <laughs> I was I was sure we were gonna get like a a hint of like sadness from Isaiah. Uh, in regards to talking about the Pokemon TCG, basically what happened, they so the, the 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 typing in Pokemon TCG is pretty weird compared to the actual games because they kind of group a lot of typings together. So uh, rock, ground, and fighting are all just fighting type together. Um, water and ice are together. Bug and grass, like these kind of things, they all put them together and they moved a couple of them around. So it's like poison is no longer psychic. It's actually going to be dark type now. Um, and one of the many, uh, changes they made is that they're just not making fairy types anymore, uh, which is unheard of. They've never receded, uh, a, a, a type before, so fairy was added with the X and Y sets, and for some reason they were like, eh, fuck it, we're not making fairy types anymore. Um, I think, actually, they did some fuckery with dragon before. Dragon, like, yeah, dragon's a little weird, because there are dragon types, but there's no dragon energy, or basic dragon energy, so yeah, that, that's another one, which is funny, because, like, fairy and dragon are actually kind of connected in the games, at least, like, typing, like, type advantage-wise. Yeah, um, dragon's just not gonna have a weak... Yeah, so, dragons are probably gonna go back to having, you know, being weak to dragon rather than fairy, or just not having a weakness, so... Uh, so yeah, I just wanted to talk about that a little bit just because it's a narrative and that's why Isaiah's having, you know, a full proxy deck because he doesn't actually have a deck anymore now that, um, fucking whatever, Wizards, Wizards of the Coast or whoever makes this game. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. If Wizards of the Coast made this game, there would be so, oh my god, I have so many complaints. This game is ran haphazardly. A child, a four-year-old child runs this game. I swear to god. Ouch. <laughs> Not even just the bannings, just everything about this game is so frustrating to deal with. The rulings? God. The cards don't do what they say on them? <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> oh my god. There are quite a few cards where it's like, oh. I'm gonna have to check the rule book on that, sir. And there's not a rule book! <laughs> the, the rule book actually doesn't exist. You have to, like, look at cases of, like, similar situations and kind of, well, you know, just decide on it yourself. rules online. <laughs> yeah. 
Which is funny because the online Pokemon trading card game, which is like the joke where we're like, oh, we'll have to play this match online and see what the game does. Sometimes there's bugs with that and they like straight up ban certain cards until they fix them. So it's like you can't even trust the online play. So uh, I don't know. It's a, it's a fucky Yikes. card game. Uh, Pokemon just need to get their shit together across all platforms. <laughs> Is any is any Pokemon um, platform thriving? Is is the show good right now or anything? Or are the books doing good? Anybody? Uh, Pikachu is like really good in Smash Ultimate right now. Potentially mm. the best character in the game. Yep, that's true. Hey, yes, that's about it, man. <laughs> Isaiah, listen here. That was a perfect segue. We're gonna start wrapping it up. We have oh, a God. brand new segment uh, on the PNTV podcast. Uh, we are talking about the case for different Smash characters. Uh, last week with the King, we went ahead and talked about Master Chief. Uh, is he likely to be in Smash? What's his moveset going to look like? Uh, we're not going to do a recap. You guys can go watch the last one. But this is all about Pokemon. This is all about, um, you know, how Game Freak is kind of giving us the dick these days. And uh, I think a big meme <laughs> with Fighter Pass 2 uh, for Smash Ultimate it was recently revealed that we're going to be getting six brand new characters after the release of uh, Byleth. Um, a big meme is that we're not actually getting six characters, we're getting five characters because confirmed one of those six characters is going to be a Pokemon for a Pokemon Sword and Shield. <laughs> That's been the joke. And a lot of people are pointing towards Urshifu uh, just because of not only the, the nature fuck? of him, he seems like a fighting boy. <laughs> Um, but he would be direct advertisement for the new Sword and Shield expansion passes. So the first question I have here, everybody start thinking what about this. What word did you say? Urshifu? Urshifu. What? <laughs> Dude. Here, I'll, I'll grab a picture. Okay, you. you grab it. Isaiah, I'll get to you last. <laughs> um, so for my boys that know who Urshifu is, you know, he's the fighting bear. The first question I have to ask is, do you want Urshifu in Smash? So Brock... Uh, I'm gonna ask you because Isaiah doesn't know who he is, and Jake is finding this picture. So Brock, first All question: right. Do you want Urshifu to be the Gen 8 representative that's gonna make it into Smash, the, the inevitable Pokemon to make it into Smash? Uh, I would not. I would not say no to that. You would not say uh, no to Urshifu, the furry man. I I wouldn't say yes, but I wouldn't deny it. Okay. Like like I would deny a like Geno or Bandana D. Uh, Ooh. Yikes. Oh, oh. <laughs> Wait, you would rather have Urshifu than Geno? Gino? Gino. You would rather have Gino. Urshifu Gino. than Geno? Bandana like, D, a real character? If, if I were to put bottom two characters, I would not, top two characters I wouldn't want would be those two. But, um. Are you like Sam? You say you don't want them because oh. everybody does want them? Or, or, Wait, that Pokemon is so no, nice. It's like, I, like it. I just. I, I just hate them irrationally. I don't have any explanation for it. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, that's fine. So, you would be okay with Urshifu. You wouldn't, like, have a desire to, you know, like, murder somebody if Urshifu was in the game or anything like that? No. Okay. Um, You'd have rational just, feelings. <laughs> my, my, my only problem with Urshifu would be, um, it would, it would be another humanoid. Mm, that's like, true. Yeah, just give me like a quadruped or something and I'll be fine with any other character. I feel that. So, um, while Isaiah is formulating his opinions here, hands on on the show of Urshifu, Jake. Oh, man. Uh, out of, um, so uh, we're, I'm going to frame this a little more, so not just in general, but like out of okay. the Gen 8 Pokemon, do you want Urshifu to be the rep for Smash Ultimate? Mm, sure. Sure? I... I don't feel strongly about most of the new Gen 8 Pokemon. Like, they're they're fine. Mm -hmm. But picturing them in a fighter, like, none of them really stand out as, like, like they'll actually be a quality pick, you know? And maybe okay. that's just me. I feel that. But, like, they're all, especially the new ones, they're kind of, like, weird. I feel that like, I, I like them, but but how 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 would they be in a fighter? You know, mm -hmm. maybe the starter evolutions, maybe like Cinderace would be okay. Mm -hmm. But everything else like has weird limbs or like wouldn't have more than one obvious attack. Mm -hmm. you know? My man, so Inteleon Urshifu... got the sticky with him though. Okay, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I don't want that in Smash. Um, <laughs> yeah, but like imagine like they're. 
the final smash is gonna be them doing the stupid Gigantamax. Mm, but, yeah. But you know, I think I think if it has to be a Pokemon rep, Urshifu is fine. Okay. It, it'll be fine, and it'll hopefully they'll have like a cool mechanic with it that isn't broken and also doesn't make them a slow piece of shit. <laughs> like every other DLC character has been so far. Yeah, I but, feel that. You know, it's. It is what it is. I th- I think it would be cool if okay. it were if it were the rep. So so two out of four here. We just have some complacency. Um, Isaiah, let's let's first hear your first hand impressions of Urshifu. You've just now seen him for the first time. Do you do you know what he's from? Like where he's coming in Pokemon wise? Pokemon. Yeah. Well, like do you do you know like <laughs> like why he's 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 gonna be in the he's gonna be a main Pokemon and I think the first DLC pack. For sword and shield like he's gonna be right. the he's he's the is he the first legendary to like actually evolve like the like actual no. legendary or no no Who? uh the sun and moon guys oh yeah, yeah also, the weird yeah. like unevolving between manaphy and fiona yeah that's true is rotom a legendary yeah. no i know no. he can't ev- he's not a legendary i know he can't he's evolve but you can breed him he's not a legendary okay. he has legendary music but no I don't even know if that's the right song. That's the first thing that popped in my head. But anyways, so yes, Urshfu. Uh, you're going to get um, the little... And I almost said Cub Chew, but that is a completely different Pokemon. Uh, you get like his <laughs> little form. What's up? Kubfu. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, so you get him, and then you evolve him into Urshifu, and he's supposed to be like a main part of the first DLC pack. Uh, Isaiah, what do you think about Urshifu? Do you like him? It's cool? kind of cool. I can't really tell what he is, and I think that's like a good sign for Pokemon. Mm, he's like a, a, a bear guy. You I look guess. everywhere, and it's like bear. Okay, I, the mystery is gone. Or you look at like a car, and it's like dog. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but you know, you look at you look at Ush- Ursafu. That if that's a bear, if you saw the pre-evolution, <laughs> you would be convinced he's a bear. Okay, well the the pre-evolution is here too. Oh, okay. And like, so the pre-evolution is a bear, but the post is not a bear anymore. Mm-hmm. Maybe they're they're just in like the some... same like family tree, probably. It has a beak. He's like a <laughs> bear. Has a beak. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, what are your feelings if if a Gen Eight Pokemon, specifically Gen Eight, was gonna make it into Smash? How are, how would you feel if it was Urshifu? I'd be okay with it. You'd be down. Yeah, I think his, his typings are confirmed, right? They're going to be one's fighting water and one's like fighting dark, I think. Correct. Uh, so I a lot the the first impressions I've been hearing for people who say Urshifu is probably going to make it in Smash is that he could be a stance change character, uh, kind of mm-hmm. like what Byleth was supposed to be with her weapons. Uh, and they just kind of were like, ah, eh, whatever. She just uses some weapons sometimes and just as a sword character other times. Um so they, they said, like, it could be, like, hit a button and you change stances because between Sword and Shield, there's the red one and the blue one, and they have, like, big punch Urshifu and little punch Urshifu or whatever the difference is. Like, one of them hits harder, but, like, is slower, and one of them, like, hits faster, but is less strong, I think. Something yeah, along me... those lines. There's a difference. So people are saying it could be a stance change character. Um out of all the Pokemon to make it into Smash from Gen 8, um, I wouldn't be offended if it was Urshifu. Like, it's not like it's like, I don't know, something stupid. Like, say if it was like Dragapult, but like the first evolution, like just a little drapey. Yeah, drapey. Like, if it was like drapey or something, I'd be like, eh, you know. I mean, but there are cooler so, Pokemon in Gen 8. Like, I think Inteleon would actually be mad cool. He'd he'd be very Greninja esque. <laughs> um. <laughs> And Cinderace, I don't know, is kind of lame too. And Rillaboom seems like the best pick among the starters, but is just Donkey Kong pretty much. It's just a gorilla with a drum. So, I don't know. There's not a lot of material in Gen 8, so I think Urshavu is, if they did it right, he could be the coolest one out of all of them. So, let me tell you, let me tell you um, what the difference between these two forms are. Okay. Be. Okay. All right, I, I got it. I know what's okay. going to happen. Um. The the one that's supposed to be like really fast or whatever, like the flowing water one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's gonna have a rapid jab, and the other one's gonna have a gentleman in them. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's the that's the stance change between. <laughs> I, I actually yeah, like that's it. it. <laughs> that's unfortunate. <laughs> rapid I, I jab. Gentleman. 
God. Captain Falcon's like, I can insert my stance change just by. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, like in all seriousness, I think something along, like in my head, it makes sense. Like if one of them's quicker, and then like down B is stance change, and then. Uh, mm -hmm. It's almost like Pikmin, maybe, where it's like, it, depending on what, like, the big beefy one has kill throws, but the other one, like, he has, like, throw combos or something. Like, stuff like that. Uh, I think that'd be cool. This is very similar. I know this is in other fighting games, but the first one that pops in mind is Naruto, uh, Ghetto Mike Tyson 4. Um, many, <laughs> <laughs> many of those characters have stance changes, so, like, mid-combo you change into, like, Sharingan, and you do, like, other moves in your combo. Game's badass, not gonna lie. Um, Isaiah knows it's badass too. We talked to Charlie the King. <laughs> we did talk to Charlie the King. Dude. We did talk to Charlie the King about Naruto, <laughs> which was badass. <laughs> Naruto, get him, Tyson. Badass game. <laughs> We're famous. Uh, no lie. Brock, Thanks. didn't you say you played Naruto, get on Mike Tyson four? Or am I imagining that? Or you said um, you would play it? Maybe. I think I would play it. Um, the only Naruto game I've ever played was Clash of Ninja two for the GameCube. Clash of Ninja two. Well. Ghetto Mike Tyson 4 is Clash of Ninja 4, but it never came out in America. Damn. So. Clash of Ninja 3 and 4 came out in Japan, never in America. So that's what Ghetto Mike Tyson 4 means in Japan. It means <laughs> Clash of Ninja. <laughs> <laughs> that's a direct translation. We should ask Major about that. What is Ghetto Mike Tyson in, uh, in Japanese, Major? You'd be like, sir? <laughs> um okay uh we actually went for quite a long time on this podcast i'm proud of us we had some decent conversation um brock i am very pleased that you joined us today uh how did how did you feel your first your first pntv podcast hopefully of many uh yeah i was, I was feeling pretty good about it mm -hmm. as uh, the the samuel knockoff <laughs> yeah has, has has discount sam Neal. <laughs> as uh, walgreens sam <laughs> As a store brand, Sam. Uh, <laughs> Oof. <laughs> yeah, um, um, yeah. If, if, if people are missing, I'll probably fill in for them. Hell yeah. You're like the floater. Yeah. I dig that. I actually want to build yeah, a rotation since we actually um, have quite a bit of people. Like we have, including us four, Sam and Jackson, we have a cast of six and I want to keep it to like a four minimum on the podcast. Four, yeah. So I think we need to make like a good rotation of who should be on when. Uh, but that's for another time. Hey, thank you guys so much for watching this. Uh, quick shout out to the people on Anchor and the, uh, the uh, podcast world. That includes Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Breaker, all those places. We are actually getting people listening, which is kind of crazy. Uh, and those stats are kind of hidden from the public. I'm pretty much the only one who can see that. So uh, shout out to the podcast fam. Uh, and uh, also obviously the people who watch the live here on Twitch or the broadcast or if you watch it on YouTube We always appreciate you um, We're probably gonna be chopping this one up because we got plenty of decent conversations So a lot of the highlights are gonna be going up uh, So yeah, I think that is all we have to say gentlemen if you want to sign off for us. Oh, 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 oh before we go Jake Oh, 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 <laughs> what? Uh, don't you have something you need to tell the people? Oh, I got you something do. I'm gonna tell the people. Okay. Let them let know. I know. I, I, I gotta, like, build up to the moment, okay? There's gotta be, like, a <laughs> weird a silence, and everyone is like, what, what, what is, is he saying? I'm gonna have a video. Ooh. I'm gonna have YouTube up. Ooh. Oh, it's gonna be probably pretty bad, but I wanna be, uh, I'm, it's, it, it'll be okay. Hey, it's gonna exist. That's all we ask for. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm gonna post it on my Twitter. Hell yeah. Um, at Jake Neal, J A K E K N E E L. Um, and it'll be up there, and it'll be awesome. Hell yeah! I am yeah. super excited. Can, do we get a hint on what it's about? Because I don't even know. Um, it, yes, it's gonna be about Pokemon. Okay. Because that okay. is my wheelhouse. That's what I got. That's what I have to offer. Hmm. But, you know, there's going to be other stuff up there, too. But I'm going to start with what's simplest for me, and that's Pokemon. Hell yeah. So we'll have we'll have some cool stuff there. Uh, next, Brock. Uh, I know there are some developments in your in your content creation area. There has been. Okay, I want to hear them. Uh, so I have... I've been slowly working on the audio quality. Okay. So it's just like I am slowly eliminating sounds people don't want to hear. <laughs> That's a start. That's there. Yeah. I have been trying to put together content ideas I could throw out. Okay. Uh, 
and I'm technically putting some of those together in like a blueprint form, I guess. Oh yeah. You at least have uh, that bit of Twitter footage that we saw. Where can we follow I you on do. Twitter for now? You know, follow me at uh, twitch.com slash uh, fate change. Fate underscore change. <laughs> you said twitch.com. <laughs> <laughs> Bro. <laughs> <laughs> Twitter.com. Twitter.com slash forward slash fate underscore changed. Uh, yes, sir. Brock's got a lot of stuff in the works. Finally, okay. Isaiah, uh, I hate to put you on the spot. I know things are still in development. Uh, I just didn't know if you want to give the people any updates on, on the situation or anything. Computer still broke. <laughs> Computer machine broke. Uh, idea machine broke. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, I'm Isaiah is just broke a, l a lot of ways. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> really but pay but paycheck, paycheck is this weekend. So. Hey, that'll get you popping. I think you should record something on your phone, but that's just me. Something to start, oh, you know? I've tried that before. <laughs> <laughs> Make like an Instagram I, video. I like a quick, like ten second. A vlog? You yeah, a vlog? yeah, uh, but like it, it doesn't have to be like here I go to Home Depot. Oh, here I go home from I Home Depot. Like this. it could be like here a I am. Friend telling me to vlog. <laughs> I think you could. <laughs> think about it. In oh, in the, the Jackson about. Curtis uh, cinematic universe, we're just taking over while he's not here. Cause I'm low key making like weeklies videos, and now you can vlog too, and boom, we'll make him proud. But also sad. Think about it. I, oh my god. <laughs> uh, I'll, 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 I'll see what I got. The For now, where can people follow you on Twitter ideas. so they can hound you about it? Oh fuck, I don't even remember my handle. One sec. It's like Jiggly something. You're Jiggly Punk. But with a lot yeah, of extra letters. Yeah, it's got some extra letters. Yeah. It's Jiggly Punk. Dude, I, okay, I have my sex, but I don't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so my normal one is Jigglypunk, but it's got three G's and two U's. Okay, so follow Isaiah there, um, hound him for video content, I know I will. DM for the other one. Mm -hmm. DM for his spicy one. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that is all we have to say. Thank you guys so much for watching this wherever you are. Or if you're listening to this, uh, hats off to you. Um, yeah, that is all we have. Thank you guys so much for watching. We're out of here. Uh, peace! Bye! Bye. Bye.